Today on The Hookup, I'm going to explore the final frontier for window coverings. I've made videos about curtains, horizontal blinds, and a more universal blinds driver solution, but I haven't made a video about roller shades yet. So today, I'm going to explore a few off-the-shelf solutions and a DIY solution to figure out whether it's better to DIY or buy. I've been waiting for IKEA's Zigbee roller shades to finally come back in stock before making this video. And I'm happy to say that after an insane $49 delivery fee to have them driven five miles from my local IKEA store to my house, I finally have them in hand. I'm going to be comparing them to some wired and wireless tubular shade motors from Zemismart and a very inexpensive DIY solution with a local web interface, MQTT control, and echo integration. To get a good baseline of what to expect here, we're going to start by looking at the different off-the-shelf solutions. The cheapest solution, and also the one with the most drawbacks in my opinion, is this tubular motor from Zemismart that costs $55 on AliExpress or about $72 on Amazon. This motor is powered by mains voltage and can be controlled with the Tuya Cloud or an RF remote control. The motor is extremely strong, relatively fast, and very quiet. It's designed to fit onto 36 to 38 millimeter roller tubes and will motorize your existing shades without breaking the bank. All that sounds pretty good, right? Well, it has some major shortcomings. The biggest of which is that it needs to be plugged into mains power, and the included power cable is only 5 feet long. Not only is that never going to be enough cord to be able to plug this unit in, but even if you do extend the original cable with your own wires, you're going to need to be concealing wires carrying mains voltage, which is less than ideal, and depending on how you do it, it might be an electrical code violation. The second unfortunate thing about this shade motor is that unlike most other products that use the Tuya Cloud, this motor uses the new Tuya WR4 module for Wi-Fi control. Even though the WR4 works perfectly for connecting to the Tuya Cloud, it isn't based on the ESP8266, so that means no Tasmoda, no Tuya Convert, and no custom firmware of any kind. But if you're in the unique situation that you are on a budget, have mains power close by, and you want to use the Tuya Cloud for home automation, including cloud integration into SmartThings, Home Assistant, Amazon Echo, and Google Home devices, these motors are an absolute bargain for just $55. To be honest, this motor's greatest strength is also its weakness. Since Wi-Fi is relatively power hungry compared to other control protocols, using it pretty much guarantees that you're going to have to keep the motor plugged into a power source, which is either inconvenient or impossible in most situations. Unfortunately, in order to make battery-powered units possible, a lower power communication protocol is needed, and that's where RF433 and Zigbee come into play. For a little less than $100, you can get this battery-powered solar shade motor that uses the 433 MHz radio frequency protocol to control your shades. The upside to a solution like this is that a single radio frequency bridge, like a Sonoff RF bridge running Tasmoda or a Broadlink RM Pro, can act as a hub for all the shades in your house. The downside to 433 is that it's a one-way protocol, meaning you won't be able to keep track of the state of your shades, so you can really only send commands and hope that they're executed properly. That being said, I think these battery-powered shades are my favorite off-the-shelf solution because they give just the right combination of affordability, customizability, and reliability. And adding them to an RF bridge or a Broadlink RM Pro allows you to easily integrate them into your existing smart home. You know what doesn't always integrate easily? Zigbee. Oh, the Zigbee. Oh, the Zigbee! Oh, the Zigbee! Oh, the Zigbee! The most expensive off-the-shelf solution I'm going to look at today is one that people have been asking me to review since they were announced. The IKEA Fjorder series battery-powered shade which is fairly reasonably priced at around $164 per unit. I say that's a reasonable price because each unit comes with a decent quality blackout shade, a nice aluminum housing, a battery, a Zigbee remote, and of course the motor. So instead of motorizing your existing shades, you're actually getting the whole package here. The Fuhrer shades were by far the easiest to install, despite the fact that their instructions are still being written like an ancient cave painting. I really like the look of the aluminum housing and the shade is fairly quiet and relatively fast. The included shades don't look cheap and do a great job of blocking out the sunlight. Unfortunately, the Fjorder also has some major limitations, starting with their fit. With other shades, it was really easy to customize the size of the roller tube to fit my non-standard window cutouts. And while it's technically possible to shorten these shades, and there are some good DIY guides out there for it, it's definitely not done easily. 
So if your windows aren't standard sizes like 34 or 36 inches, be ready to do a significant teardown to customize them. Also, unlike the last model from ZemiSmart, the Futur Shade are battery only without solar, so they're going to need to be recharged roughly every four to six months. The last major downside to me is that the shades are Zigbee, which in all of my smart home experience I've found to be the single most frustrating protocol ever invented. Zigbee sounds like one of those things that's just going to work, like, oh, I have other Zigbee things in my house, so this is definitely going to work. But it doesn't always go like that. These shades are meant to work with the IKEA Trod Free Hub, and any other control mechanism is community developed and not guaranteed to work or continue to work down the line. I spent more time than I'm comfortable admitting adding them to the three big Zigbee home automation platforms. That's Samsung SmartThings, Hubitat, and Home Assistant. In SmartThings, I was never able to see the battery indicator, but the open and close buttons and the custom positions worked fine. I believe that there is a custom device handler that adds more functionality, but the open and close and custom functions work without any fiddling. In Home Assistant, I was able to add the Fjorder shades via decons after almost 45 minutes of pressing random button combinations and holding them down for various lengths of time. In Home Assistant, there's no battery indicator, and for some reason the up arrow is always grayed out no matter what position the shades are in. You can control the shades with the dimmer slider, and the custom settings work fine, but if you control the shades manually with the remote, the state of the shades isn't updated in Home Assistant. Hubitat also works with a custom community-built driver, and was probably the easiest platform to integrate the shades with. But the battery information still isn't available, and the icon shows as unknown. With all these solutions, it's possible that digging through the hundreds of replies from their respective community threads might have allowed me to increase their functionality. Everyone on these forums is super helpful, and I'm incredibly grateful for all their hard work, but if you're expecting perfect, foolproof documentation for integrating these shades into your home automation platform, you are going to be disappointed. Okay, so now that we've seen the competition, let's check out the DIY solution. This solution was developed and posted by the Thingivis user Pigot, who not only designed some excellent models for 3D printing, but also wrote some powerful code to go with it. Let's start with the bad stuff first. When comparing this DIY version to the off-the-shelf stuff, the motor is the biggest shortcoming. The cheap 2.8 BYJ steppers are extremely powerful for their size and price, but they do have limits. Not only in the amount of torque that they can supply, but also in their speed. The IKEA shades can raise in about 27 seconds, compared to the roughly two and a half minutes that it takes for the DIY solution, which is kind of hilariously slow. The other issue is that heavier shade fabric may cause issues. You can increase the supply voltage from around 5 volts to 9 volts without burning out the voltage regulator in the Node MCU or overheating the motor, but by using AA batteries to increase the weight of the shade incrementally, I found that the limit only increased from around 330 grams at 5 volts to around 500 grams at 9 volts, which is still too weak for many heavier fabrics, and it's really disappointing compared to the ZemiSmart motors that have no appreciable weight limit. However, shortcomings aside, the DIY solution is pretty slick. I bought the cheapest vinyl roller shades available at Lowe's for $13, and I automated them using an ESP8266 and a 2.8 BYJ stepper motor for about $11. That means that I ended up with a customized MQTT ready roller shade that I can access and program from a web browser and control with my Echo devices for less than $25. And yes, I know you don't have to make the comment, the price doesn't include the price of a 3D printer. Do you still not have a 3D printer yet? Go buy one. The best part about this DIY solution is how easy they are to make. Step one is to get all your parts printed out, so head over to the link in the description for the original Thingiverse project by Pigot. You'll need to know the inner diameter of your shade tube to pick the right gear adapter to print. And then you'll need to decide whether you want to mount your shades in front of your window or on the top of your window casing. You'll also need a small screw and a 608 bearing. The parts are brilliantly designed and rely on gravity to keep the shade gear engaged with the motor. So when you install the screw to hold the bearing in place, don't over tighten it. You actually just want it to rest on the gear using the weight of the shade. Once you've got all your parts assembled, you need to program your Node MCU. I've taken Pigot's original code and modified it in two ways. First, I've added an additional optional Amazon Echo integration, and second, I've pre-compiled each version for the most recent ESP8266 Arduino core, so you don't have to worry about installing libraries or messing with the code. All you need to do is download two files from the links in the description, rollershade.bin and the nodemcu pyflasher.exe file. Plug your nodemcu into your computer and start nodemcu pyflasher. Select QIO for the flash mode, 
yes to erase all flash memory, then click browse and locate the rollershade.bin file. Use the auto select functionality to find your Node MCU's COM port and then hit flash Node MCU. At this point, a wireless network called Rollershade Configuration will be created. You should automatically be redirected to a page where you enter your specific information, but if not, you can manually navigate there by going to 192.168.4.1. Optionally here, you can also configure your Amazon Echo or MQTT integrations on this page. Once you've got your information entered, hit save, wait a few seconds, and then press the RST button on your Node MCU. Next, you're going to wire up your Node MCU using this wiring diagram. For me, it made the most sense to wire up a long, thin power cable and then mount the Node MCU and the stepper driver behind the shade, rather than attaching five wires from the stepper motor all the way to the driver. In the web interface, you'll set up the upper and lower limits of your specific shade. Click on the three lines at the top and then press Setup. Use the up and down arrows to move your shades to the correct top and bottom limits and then hit the Set Start and Set Max buttons at the appropriate locations. To add them to Amazon Echo, just open up your Alexa app on your phone, hit Discover New Devices, and then scroll down to Other. And if all goes well, it should end up with a new device with the name that you specified in the initial setup. To add them to Home Assistant via MQTT, you'll need to add these entries to your configuration.yaml file under the Cover heading, and then reboot your Home Assistant server. Once your Home Assistant comes back up, you can add the new cover to Lovelace like you would any other entity. Both the Echo and the MQTT integrations support opening and closing to custom positions as well as full open and full close. As I mentioned before, the speed is an issue and opening and closing these shades on demand is so slow that I get a little laugh out of it every time I do it. But automated scheduled openings and closings should work great. So all things considered, it's time to decide whether it's better to DIY or buy. From a price perspective, it's hard to argue with the DIY solution. The actual motorization requires less than $10 in parts and delivers Wi-Fi connectivity via WebUI, Amazon Echo integrations, and MQTT. If you want to use cheap vinyl shades or your existing shades are lightweight enough to get away with the low power motors and you don't mind the slow opening and closing speeds, you should go with the DIY method. But it does still require you to run a wire to every window and even though you can get away with a much thinner wire here since they're carrying low voltage, unfortunately most blackout shade fabrics are going to be too heavy for these motors to lift when running off of just 5 volts or even at 9 volts. If you're the lucky unicorn with mains power wired close to your windows and you want to use the Tuya Cloud, you'll have a great solution to automating your shades for just $55. If you don't have any existing shades, the IKEA shades do offer a nice all-in-one solution, but be ready to fight a little bit with the Zigbee protocol, and if you have non-standard window sizes, you should check out the tutorials for adjusting the length to determine if it's a project that you want to take on. My favorite solution overall is by far the ZemiSmart RF solar and battery powered motor. Paired with a Sonoff RF bridge with Tasmoda, they give you locally controlled, non-cloud reliant MQTT control that you never need to charge as long as your window receives a decent amount of sunlight every day. As always, thank you to my awesome patrons over at Patreon for continuing to support my channel and offsetting IKEA's insane delivery fees. If you're interested in supporting my channel, please check out the links down in the description. If you need help setting up any of the things that you saw in this video, please leave a comment below or come join us on the Hookup Home Automation Facebook page. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching the Hookup.